This is a story of a street that connected two American industry giants. In 1825, Dewitt Clinton stunned the city and the country, making westward transportation a reality with what people called a ditch. The Erie Canal was 40 feet wide by 4 feet deep, considered to be one of the greatest commercial wonders in its time. The canal directly ran through Schenectady, New York. In the 1840s, on the north end of what's now Erie Boulevard was was the Schenectady Locomotive Works, which later became the American Locomotive Company, the locomotive manufacturer. And that was known as the Big Shop, but, but that was also a cyclical business. So if times were good, people would go to work for the Locomotive Works. If times were bad, they'd go back home and work on the farms. As time went on, the canal not only brought attention for transportation routes, but caught the attention of a famous inventor. In 1886, Thomas Edison was looking for a new home for his Edison Machine Works, which, which made the equipment for his electrical power systems. He sent a sales force out looking for a series of vacant factory buildings near a good transportation network, and one of those just happened to be in between the Erie Canal and the New York Central Railroad, and by 1900, they employed over 5,000 people at the Schenectady GE plant, and the city's population had gone from about 13,000 and had more than doubled to 30,000, and and that that growth just just continued. Around the turn of the 20th century, Theodore Roosevelt set aside federal money to redevelop the Erie Canal. In the process, he closed down the canal that stretched between GE and Alco, later making this the stretch that is now Erie Boulevard. The boulevard grew with excitement as small businesses took notice and commercial development exploded. In the 1940s, with, with, with GE Schenectady and the nation gearing up for World War II, Erie Boulevard was really a bustling place as, as GE was running, you know, three shifts, seven days a week for, for war work. Now it, its workforce by 1945 had increased to about 48,000. With Alco focusing on their locomotives, GE started to expand their manufacturing by supplying the lighting on Erie Boulevard. It was lit using the latest GE lighting, so, so GE used it as a model for new or use it as a model for new lighting designs, both both in 1924 and then, then in 1947 to 1949 they did a redesign and made it the Great White Way. Back in the day, oh my goodness, Schenectady was the city that lights and hauls the world. I mean, it really lived up to that appellation. Um, lights the GE, hauls the Alco, uh, the GE really contributed to Schenectady's rise, its population and its cachet in the world, whatever. Uh, without GE, Schenectady would have been just another river town. With the development of small businesses, Erie Boulevard became a destination for shopping and activities for all. And as a little girl in the 50s, one of my fondest memories is getting all dressed up. My mother would be all dressed up with her hat. I mean, hats were like the thing. And her gloves and her beautiful clothes. And she dressed my brother and I up. He had a little bow tie on with a suit. And I'd have my little patent leather Mary Janes and white gloves and pretty dress. And we'd go downtown. And um, we'd shop in the stores. And growing up there, it was kind of like a neat place to go down. and spend some time and go to the theater, go to Proctor's, and the State Theater was there, and the Colony Theater, and um, there were a lot of neat little shops. Um, and I remember going with my, my folks in the 60s, we used to do a lot of shopping downtown for clothes. It was, uh, there were also music stores down there. There was a, um, music stores to buy records and also instruments. While Erie Boulevard continued to grow with people and business, the longtime excitement of GE and Alco 
began to change. The downtown area was starting to decline, uh, and part of that may have been due to the uh, cutbacks at GE. I remember earlier on in my childhood that it, it would be very busy, and uh, especially around the rush hours, it was not the time to be there. Um, and later on, my, my experiences were that the, the volume of traffic really had decreased. After World War II, almost all business requested diesel locomotives. Alco, not being able to make the demands, partnered up with GE. In 1960, GE had created their own line of road locomotives, in turn taking business away from Alco. Just 10 years later, the 112 years of locomotive production had come to a close. This began the downward spiral of the street that was once loved. GE had been experiencing strikes from their workers since 1946, but none larger than the strikes in 1969. So in 1980, the GE Board of Directors brought in Jack Welch to really change the company's culture and make it competitive in the new global economy. That they had fears that if GE didn't change, that, that it would fail. The biggest change I noticed was just uh, the decrease in the, the traffic, and I think that was probably because of the impact of uh, the beginning of the cutbacks at GE. With the new chairman, Jack Welch, in charge, GE started laying off and subcontracting, putting many people out of work and changing the environment and attitudes on Erie Boulevard. After GE had laid off their employees, everyone in the area could see the effects it had on Erie Boulevard and Schenectady. You could also see the deterioration in, uh, in that street. You could see that um, General Electric was already shutting down factories at the time and a uh, number of people uh, who, were, who were frequenting downtown Schenectady uh, really decreased dramatically through the 70s, 80s, and 90s especially. And a lot of shops were closing down. Um, Wallace Armour ended up closing up and it's replaced by something else. I mean, for a long time as GE went, so went Schenectady. You know, the Boulevard has changed dramatically. There used to be a lot of, there used to be a lot of uh, walk-in traffic. There used to be a lot of uh, traffic on the boulevard, pedestrian traffic, but that traffic has declined with the decline of GE. It, it hit a really a low point in the 90s and, and the, the early 2000s, and a lot of shops were boarded up, and, and it just seemed like a dead, ugly place, so especially when you get to the Alco works and, and all of those old factories, rusting factories, and concrete on the side. I guess my more recent experiences of Schenectady is that it's in decline and that uh, any attempt at trying to boost the economic activity would only be beneficial. Within the last couple of years, plans have been made to build a casino in the lot where Alco once stood, with hopes of providing more jobs and reviving the street to how it once was. In the last 10 years, it's actually started back up again, but with the cleanup and the new plans, you can see that it's really turning a corner right now. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of my neighbors and a lot of us in Schenectady really are quite optimistic about it. I think it's got some good things, uh, especially the fact that they're going to beautify that area. That's what I'm waiting for, because that's a beautiful part of the, of the Mohawk, and it needs to be, you know, groomed. And the idea of the casino and its possible effects have created diverse opinions from the residents of Schenectady. That's, I mean, social economic impact of casinos, you can look at it across the board. Uh, huge initial, and then it drops off. Uh, I'm not in favor of it. Well, I have mixed feelings about that. Um, I'm not a gambler, but it's fun sometimes. Yeah. Well, I know that from the plans that I've seen, it's going to have a dramatic effect on the area below. There's going to be a lot more green spaces, a lot more trees along it. There are already plans even before the casino to do that. And they, there was funding, and there, were, there is already a transformation in, in the boulevard. But I think it's going to be a very thriving and very uh, lively uh, street, uh, uh, road, uh, once the casino goes in. I guess the only impact might just be the, uh, the degree of traffic coming through. Uh, definitely it'll bring a lot more jobs, uh, you know, when you're starting with, with such a, 
a low number of jobs when we've lost so many factories and so many industrial jobs. It'll bring a lot of service employees. It'll bring construction employees, certainly, in building up that area. There's so much to do in Schenectady that we're not aware of. I mean, we have a lot of hidden treasures here, like the GE plot, uh, the stockade, uh, Central Park. Um, there's things to do here but a lot of people don't know about them. So maybe the casino will bring more of these things to people's attention. Uh, but yes, I think it's, it's going to be a good thing. It's a mixed blessing, I believe. With the casino, I think it's really kind of bringing a different mix, kind of continuing to transform Erie Boulevard and probably make it better than it had ever been before.